Good morning. My name is Steve Hindy. I'm the founder and president of Showing Animals Respect and Kindness, Shark. Shark focuses on video documenting cruelty nationwide and beyond. I want to first state that the following people were invited to this press conference. Tim Eastman, veterinarian for the California Rodeo Salinas. Mandy Lindquist, California Rodeo Salinas Public Relations. Cindy Schoenholtz, Outreach Director for the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Bob Fox, California Lobbyist for the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Jolie Walker, Investigator for the California Veterinary Medical Board. Gary Tiscornia, newly retired CEO and Executive Director for the SPCA of Monterey County. Scott Delucci, current CEO and Executive Director for the SPCA for Monterey County. A couple quick notes on this, on these uh, invitees. Tim Eastman did respond to our email. He said that he is working in the Bay Area today, so we want to credit him with the professional courtesy of a response. Um, Scott Delucci, the CEO of the SPCA, we actually stopped at the SPC yesterday on our way in. I went into the office and was told by one of the nice ladies at the desk that Mr. Delucci was right on the other side of a window. I could see him, his back was to me. She was nice enough to go into his office to tell him I was there and why I was there he did not turn his did not turn around. He simply said that he told uh, she came out and told me that he said he was busy. I left my name, my number, and it said Salinas Rodeo, um, and he did not call me back. We have three documents to share with you that were filed with the court. We will re reference exhibits in those documents during this press conference. It is common knowledge that Shark has a law, had a lawsuit against the California Rodeo Salinas. That lawsuit was dismissed June 17, 2016. Today, a notice of appeal will be filed by lawyers for Gibson, Dunn and & Crutcher and the Animal Legal Defense Fund on behalf of Shark. We will continue to push for the humane treatment of animals at the California Rodeo Salinas. The appeal will challenge the court's decision not to hold either Tim Eastman or the rodeo liable for the underreporting of animal injuries under California's rodeo reporting law. The court never saw Shark's video or photographic evidence of animal injuries because it dismissed the case before trial based on misinterpretation of the statute and in deference to the California Veterinary Medical Board. Let's talk about that board. California law mandates that rodeo veterinarians report all injuries requiring treatment. In 2013 and again in 2014, Shark filed complaints with the California Veterinary Medical Board, hereafter referred to as the Vet Board, regarding the underreporting of injuries at the California Rodeo. In 2013, Shark documented 23 animal injuries while Dr. Eastman reported just three. In 2014, Shark documented 19 injuries, while Dr. Eastman reported just one. In both cases, the vet board cleared Dr. Eastman after what it claimed were thorough reviews. Regarding those reviews, at no time was anyone from Shark contacted by the vet board. Unbeknownst to us, the vet board refused to consider YouTube videos of the injuries posted by Shark nor did the vet board request the original video files which we would have provided. In short, there was no credible investigation whatsoever. That is not to suggest that the vet board didn't talk to anyone at all. Bob Fox is a lobbyist for the PRCA. Lobbyist Bob Fox apparently had a very good line of communication with vet board investigator Joe Lee Walker. I should note that Mr. Fox and Ms. Walker were both invited to appear here today and have not. Why is a lobbyist who had nothing to do with the animal injuries reported having direct contact with the vet board investigator regarding an ongoing investigation? In a September 23, 2014 email to operatives from the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association and the California Rodeo, Fox states, I had a very productive conversation with Jolie Walker, 
the investigator who is handling the complaint that was filed with the veterinary board. She was very cooperative and gave me a comfortable feeling about how the board would handle the complaint. Moving down the email, we read, when I asked about the videos and whether they had received or requested unedited versions of them, she said they would not use any YouTube videos in their investigation. If they felt they were important, they would request videos from sources where they could verify their authenticity. I have to stop here and question how the videos could not be important as they were the very foundation of the complaint. Mr. Fox continues, I mentioned that we, had, we have had experience with some animal rights groups that have sent edited videos, and in fact, in one case, the videos weren't even of a rodeo in the U.S., but came from an event in another country. Further down the email, Mr. Fox writes, I mentioned that we have been dealing with some of the principals involved in this case, without mentioning any names, for many years, and that they have not had a good track record when it comes to honesty. She laughed and, quote, got it, unquote, acknowledging the requirement for reporting injuries, quote, isn't really accomplishing anything, unquote. The ethics of communication between Mr. Fox, the lobbyist, and Jolie Walker, the investigator for the vet board, is highly questionable. Jolie Walker's flippant attitude toward the law and her own job in claiming that the requirement for reporting injuries, quote, really isn't accomplishing anything, unquote, should result in a review of exactly why California taxpayers, taxpayers are providing Jolie Walker with a job. We are today requesting an investigation into the California Vet Board's non-existent investigation into the California Rodeo Salinas in 2013 and 2014. The intent of the rodeo reporting law was to protect animals, but the California Veterinary Medical Board has turned the process into a cover-up, resulting in a wholly undeserved exoneration used as propaganda by the California Rodeo. The following has been included repeatedly in various press releases from the California Rodeo Salinas over and over, word for word, for years. Quote, we will continue to put the welfare of the livestock at our event as a top priority. I want you to remember that phrase as you listen to the rest of this evidence. We will continue to put the welfare of the livestock at our event as a top priority. Very commendable, but is it true? Let's look at the evidence. <clears throat> Veterinarian Tim Eastman. According to his deposition, Tim Eastman admits that he started attending the California Rodeo at a very young age, and that his family has been involved with the rodeo for many years. Eastman's wife is involved, and his brother is a past president of the rodeo. Tim Eastman's father is a past announcer and president of the California Rodeo. His grandfather got his father involved. Eastman says his great uncle ran the barbecue for many years. In his deposition, Eastman stated that he probably has a dozen relatives who volunteer their time with the rodeo. Tim Eastman is on the rodeo board of directors, and he has at times been on the rodeo's executive committee. He owns stock in the rodeo. Tim Eastman has a lot of reasons to protect the rodeo. Nevertheless, Eastman is the rodeo's official veterinarian, a position that can bring very negative attention to the event. That is a conflict of interest. By his own admission, Eastman has no guidance or oversight as the rodeo vet. None. Tim Eastman understandably wants to protect the rodeo, and reporting a large number of injuries is contrary to a positive image for the rodeo. Again, that is a conflict of interest. In his deposition, Eastman, who also oversees the rodeo's veterinary committee, states, I've never had anybody in our committee I didn't personally know. It's always been veterinarians that work for me. All the other rodeo vets are his employees, so they may understandably have concerns that if they were to contradict him regarding the care and treatment of rodeo animals, or the lack of care and treatment, that their livelihood could potentially be at risk. These facts constitute layer after layer of conflict of interest in the extreme. No credible organization or individual would allow such a conflict. What is an injury? It sounds like a simple question, right? No one seems to have a problem with, say, a broken leg. That's an injury. 
What is more at issue is what has been termed by the rodeo as a stinger. There are lots of stingers at the California rodeo, more than I have ever seen in my over two decades of investigating rodeos nationwide. A stinger is described by Tim Eastman as like an Indian burn, when you run your forearm hard, that the rope creates friction that burns a steer and causes pain for typically a stride or two or in the most severe circumstances, a visible abrasion. There are factors that encourage a stinger. The faster a steer is moving, the better the chance of a stinger. Salinas has a very long score. The score is the distance the animal is able to run once out of the chute before being roped. Because of the big arena, the animals in the California rodeo are running at full speed when they're roped. The difference between roping an animal at full speed versus somewhat slower is the difference between a car crash at the speed limit on an interstate versus a fender bender. The more speed, the bigger the crash. On top of that, because the animals are used multiple times each day, day after day, the likelihood of injuries and re-injuries increase significantly. This is common sense. You don't have to be a veterinarian to get it. But Tim Eastman claims these aren't injuries. So he doesn't give these animals rest or treatment for pain. Tim Eastman claims the stinger, quote, burns a steer and causes pain for typically a stride or two. Allow me to show you some video documentation from the California Rodeo Salinas. A strider two? I look like a strider two. These animals at the California Rodeo are not exhibiting for a stride or two. All the animals in this video are injured and in pain. They're not trying to fake it for a lawsuit. They're not trying to get out of work for a day. They're injured. Apparently, Tim Eastman feels that since a stinger or repeated stingers are just painful and not life-threatening, that it doesn't matter. Such an attitude should not be tolerated by any veterinarian or humane-minded organization. In fact, prey animals, like cattle, naturally try to hide injuries. They try not to exhibit pain, because in the wild this would invite predation. So when they do exhibit, it is because they're injured, and they need medical treatment and or rest. Unfortunately, California vet Tim Eastman claims that all of these animals are not injured, and he gives them no treatment. I suggest there, that is because treatment would have to be reported. No treatment, no report, which translates into low injury numbers for the rodeo. In public court documents, the rodeo admits that a period of rest or even a massage constitutes veterinary treatment, and that means the treatment would have to be reported. So the steers get nothing, and as other court documents prove, the rodeo refuses to bring in more steers. In 2015, under pressure, as a result of Shark's documentation of animal injuries, the California Rodeo installed cameras to monitor animals leaving the arena. The intent was to show that the steers no longer exhibit the injuries displayed in the arena moments earlier. I've seen that footage. Instead of refuting Shark's documentation, the rodeo's own video supports our claim. The animals are still exhibiting their injuries after they leave the arena, contrary to Tim Eastman's false claim of a stride or two. Now the rodeo is claiming that there are copyrights involved, and so the footage is not being made public. I challenge the rodeo to release that documentation or permit Shark to release it, because we have a copy, 
It is outrageous and telling that the rodeo would claim copyright on video of injured animals out of the arena moving toward their pens. The 2015 rodeo files should be released from the Salinas files, in which case you will see the injuries documented by the rodeo's own cameras are consistent in number and description with the injuries Shark documented in 2013 and 2014. The animals are not walking the injuries off as rodeo vet Tim Eastman claims. In addition to the supposed copyright of behind the scenes video of no commercial value whatsoever, the rodeo has many court documents that should be made available to you. While I believe the documents presented today will paint a compelling portrait of animal cruelty and cover up by the California Rodeo, there are many, many more documents, including damning emails, to which you should have access, and we wanted to show them to you very badly today. Ask the rodeo management to publish or permit Shark to publish those incriminating documents. While the rodeo people discount stinger injuries for official purposes, they discuss them differently in private. There are some emails we can sh share with you. September 9, 2014, excerpt of email from Tim Eastman to Mandy Lindquist. Subject line, stingers. And I think we need to really address the stinger issue. Hindi and Mills are on to it. September 9, 2014, excerpt of email from Cindy Schoenholz to Mandy Lindquist. I talked to Jeff Davis last night, and he thinks it is because the same group of steers gets roped every day because of the number of rounds you have. I guess we really need to do that next year and maybe have more steers so that they don't try ropes every day, but that will be spending. In other words, they know they're overworking the steers, they know they need more, but they don't want to pay for more. Remember, livestock is our top concern at the rodeo. June 4, 2015, excerpt of email from Cindy Schoenholz to Mandy Lindquist. I would absolutely encourage leadership at the California Rodeo to look into the reason for the amount of stingers at your event and how to prevent that in the future. This was a suggestion of mine last year. We had that discussion last year regarding the number of runs on the steers and the number of go-rounds. And there are many, many other examples of the rodeo's acknowledgement of the, st of the stinger problem in the rodeo's documents. There are repeated references to a couple ways of a couple ways to reduce the number of stingers. One is to reduce the length of the score, the distance, and the speed built up before the rope. The other is to get more steers so they're not used as often. That advice is rejected. Excerpt of September 9, 2014, email from Mandy Lindquist, the public relations person, to Cindy Schoenholz and Bob Fox. Team roping and our long score are revered traditions here at Salinas. It makes me nervous that that is what the AR people are attacking now. If I could just throw in it, we're not attacking their revered traditions. We're documenting animal injuries and trying to put a stop to it. There are other references to the fact that more steers would cost more money. What is clear is that the rodeos claim that the care of the animals is of uppermost concern is false. Salinas' response to the injuries issue. There is a document which we challenge Salinas to release to the public that suggests one of the ways they discussed to distract people from the stinger issue was to, for Tim Eastman to host a wine and cheese event. I kid you not. This event was to include a guy playing a guitar. The rodeo's focus is always on distraction from cruelty issues instead of simply resolving them. After the rodeo in 2014, various rodeo players had communications where the, wherein they discussed Tim Eastman trying to get a restraining order or to have me accused of harassment. Mind you, I've never met Mr. Eastman, Dr. Eastman. I've never met him. They also wanted only pro-rodeo people to get credentials to film. Again, the rodeo should release those documents. And if they won't, and they want to say they want to let us do it, we'll be more than happy to do so. Backlash against the media. January 23, 2015. Artie Reagan 
of radio station KZSC 88.1 sent an email to Mandy Lindquist requesting a response to shark accusations against the rodeo. We are reaching out to you so that the Salinas Rodeo can respond to these allegations. If you're willing to provide a statement, please let me know, and we can arrange to include the rodeo's perspective on the air. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to hearing back. I don't know how Mr. Ragian and his station could have been more fair, but apparently fairness is considered treachery in the rodeo world. A January 23rd, 2015 email from Cindy Schoenholz to uh, Amanda Gianellini directed Gianellini to deny the station press credentials in the future until such time as the station agreed to be educated about rodeo. SPCA of Monterey County. Throughout the court documents, shock obtained from the rodeo as a result of our lawsuit. We see repeated references to the alliance between the SPCA of Monterey County and the rodeo. The rodeo relies on the SPCA for cover and support, and the rodeo claims that the SPCA's injury figures align with its own. As shark video documentation proves, the SPCA's injury numbers should not align with those of the rodeo because the rodeo is ignoring dozens of injured animals. In 2013, Shark approached SPCA Executive Director Gary Tiscornia about the glitter bulls. Do we have them? Yes. About the glitter bulls used in so-called bullfights at the Salinas Rodeo. Bulls are sprayed with Tresemme hairspray, again, I kid you not, including in the face, and then have glitter poured on them. The glitter sticks to the hairspray. The glittering bulls are then sent into a small ring to be harassed by rodeo clowns. This is very stressful to the bulls, which is exactly what the rodeo people want, to make the bulls react violently out of stress and frustration. In addition to the glitter bulls, I contacted Mr. Tiscornia regarding the underreporting of injuries. Mr. Tiscornia blew off all our concerns and the, SPA, the SPCA did nothing. The rodeo counts on the SPA support while the rodeo, well, I'm sorry, while the SPCA touts itself as being opposed to rodeo animal abuse on its website. This kind of working both sides of the fence in animal protection is shameful. Shark doesn't wish to be critical of other humane organizations, but when we run into a case like the SPCA of Monterey County, we have to speak out. Conclusion. Within the large volume of documents obtained as a result of Shark's lawsuit against the California Rodeo, we've read repeated references to ourselves as animal extremists. It isn't extreme to want animals to be treated with respect and kindness. It isn't extreme to use cameras to document our concerns for the world to see. And it's not extreme to expect California state law to be enforced. We've been open and transparent while the rodeo has been closed and secretive and downright vindictive against any media that doesn't dance to their tune. When challenged to improve their treatment of animals, the rodeo's response is to manipulate and redirect attention. Shark's documents, shark documents and exposes and the rodeo plays shell games and continues its cruel, cruel practices. This is disturbing to us and, in our opinion, downright un-American. So in closing, I ask, who are the extremists? 